This is the Alabama Orthopedic Clinic D1 Training High School Football Preview Show. We are a month into the season here on UTV 44, Friday Night Rivals, and tonight we are uh, heading out to Theodore, a matchup in 7A, Theodore and Fairhope, Jim Cox and Dan Brennan. Uh, we say it every week, but a month. We're, we're, yeah. we're a month into this thing already. We're motoring through this thing, but you start to sort out who's mm -hmm. who. Had a great game last week, oh, too. Such and a great game. And that was one of those games where you thought, well, let's find out who's who between these two. Happened to be Baldwin County against uh, St. Paul's. Right down to the last possession. That's St. Paul's style, by the way. It was really a, a, a battle of, of mm -hmm. big momentum swings yep. in that game as St. Paul's jumped, fell behind 14 0, and then they took a 28 14 lead. And then uh, here comes Baldwin County late in the fourth yeah. quarter, and then they've got it fourth down inside the 20. And St. Paul's came up with a stop, so that was a big win for the Saints. And and you boy, you look at that Baldwin County schedule. We talked about it during the game, daunting for the next month what they've got in front of them. Yeah, I mean, if you're in that region, it, nothing. Very few games are going to come easy, and it's very uh, loaded, heavy at the top. So uh, talented team. AJ Mix, fun to watch him. Yeah, he's fun to watch, and uh, I think Nate's got his team playing well up at uh, in. Uh, Baymanette, and, mm -hmm. and so there'll be a challenge for nearly anybody on their schedule going down the uh, down the road here. Yeah, looking forward to seeing a big 7A matchup uh, here tonight. Mm. Oh, as yeah. uh, well, Theodore, of course, won the region last year, and a lot of teams, a lot of people high on the Bobcats there. Dr. Cesar Roca again with us here uh, this year to talk uh, injuries. We could talk, you know, I always feel like we could find better news to talk about at some point with the doctors, <laughs> don't you? As opposed to well, uh, but he's getting people better. That's it. That's Absolutely. the injuries already that's happened, especially yeah, right. uh, in the shoulder. Like if you were to take a tumble off of a, yeah. say, a stool, uh, you don't want to <laughs> okay. you don't want to uh, do yeah. that. But shoulder injuries are right. something we see during the um, season and we kind of see we see different types of shoulder injuries. Tell us about right. kind of the, the different types you see a lot uh, right now during the football well, season. A lot of times what happens is when uh, let's say someone's tackling a runner and the tackling player grabs the jersey and the, the runner keeps going. Then you externally rotate mm. and then that's The typically... tackler is the one getting hurt there, right? Exactly. Yeah. Or for instance, if the, the, the quarterback is throwing the ball, he gets hit from behind. Or if Dan is asking for a Diet Coke like this, yeah. like his wife yanks it back. <laughs> Are that, we going there again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but that, that would There's be. There's no chance that injury is going to happen. Uh, we'll yeah. Preface that his way. His wife's anyway. not going to give me that. Coke, yeah, right. Right. Uh, uh, no, but the problem, the, the, the interesting thing about uh, shoulder injuries in the high school age is that it's unfortunate that if you're less than 20 years old, the chances of a redislocation is like 90%. Oh, wow. So it's extremely important for these athletes to be well trained in a place like D1 where they show them how to be, have strong shoulders, et cetera. And also the problem, like the coaches uh, are great at showing them the proper technique. I mean, and also the awareness of, okay, I can't just grab this. I mean, of course, you know, in the heat of battle, anything can happen. Right. But I think knowing the mechanism of injury is imperative that we try to make sure that this, uh, this uh, uh, young high school athletes don't dislocate their shoulder because I can tell you, if you're 17 years old, I guarantee you, you're going to have, this a very good chance that the shoulder is going to dislocate over and over again, and then you're going to have to have surgery. Hey. I mean, someone uh, a little, you know, like in, in the 30s, like you, Thank okay, you. may not be well as, played. Uh, well played. Uh, <laughs> may not be as much of a risk. It's still a risk of, but, but uh, a 17 year old, 16 year old, oh my God, that's a disaster. You know, I saw, so I watch a lot of NFL and uh, Chicago Bears have a guy, Anthony Miller, wide receiver, played at Memphis, I think, right? Um, yeah. and, um, and he had it all, it just kept popping out all year. And finally, he just had to, right. had to have it fixed in the off season, but you would, you could actually see it in the game when it would happen, and then he'd right. go to the sideline. I'm like, oh, that's got to right. be excruciating. Mm -hmm. And there are things we can do when, in season that we can put players and uh, exercise them and put them when they're safe to get them back. There's special bracing that we can do to prevent so that so the, someone is reaching for a ball, or reach, they can't go past here. Right. And then that prevents that, that mechanism. You know, but no, you're completely right. I mean, I had a, I had a, a, a kid not too long ago. He was actually a baseball and, and, and a football player. And he finally just came to see me. He had dislocated so many times, half of that socket was worn out. Mm. Oh. So here you are, you have a 16 year old kid whose that shoulder is just a complete mess. That's the part of what we're doing. Easy on the medical terms there, Doc. That shoulder's a complete mess. <laughs> That's right. No, Don't get too I mean, technical on us. I understand, but, uh, but, but the, the, the point is that this child is, is, is just going to have an arthritic shoulder for the rest of his life. Mm. So part of what we do here is education. So right. 
please just do whatever you, the proper technique, listen to your coaches, exercise it properly so that to prevent those those disastrous injuries. Yeah, strength is always the it's Absolutely. always the answer. On the, the strength, like just knowing the mechanism of injury. Right. right. Uh, so that's uh, good 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 stuff there, uh, Dr. Cesar Roca, and we'll, pro we'll probably see you again for the season's out, right? I hope so. I yeah. mean, he's rating so gold. It's always fun <laughs> making fun of you. Well, well, <laughs> well, you're not the first person to bring that up on the show. All right, so we'll have more people. Coach Carter, would you like to make fun of me next? We're going to talk Fairhope Pirate football. That comes up next as we get ready for our 7A matchup here tonight. Friday Night Rivals, we're in Theodore, 7A. Theodore taking on Fairhope right here on UTV 44. minutes or so from our kickoff here tonight will be in Theodore 7 a matchup between Theodore the home team and we've got the Fairhope Pirates making the road trip across the uh, Bayway uh, to take on the Theodore Pirates coach Tim Carter here Quincy Jackson with us we'll talk with Quincy in just a second so uh, we were just talking at the opening of the show about uh, like Baldwin County schedule that they have in 6a uh, and just what they have in front it, it, it's not like y'all have had an easy go of it to open up the season with quality <laughs> opponents either on 7a right no we play some good football teams and uh, you know it's been a challenge for us early on so uh and this week is we're raising the bar another notch with with theodore so and, and, and i know um we've talked about this with you and other coaches before kids are more resilient than than the coaches are in a lot of in a lot of ways and you've got to be able to put a tough loss like to murphy last week behind you to yeah. not have it carry Absolutely. over into a big matchup this week uh, against Theodore Bobcats, right? I'm not very resilient at anything <laughs> at 53 years old. I'm telling you right now, uh, you know, it, it's our kids are. They came back and were ready to work, and uh, we know the challenge ahead. I mean, we're playing the defending region champs, mm -hmm. uh, and Coach Collier and his guys, they just do such a phenomenal job. His kids play extremely hard, so uh, our kids didn't languish on it long. We know we weren't happy, and uh, but, you know, it's a new day, and it's a mm -hmm. new, new opportunity, and, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we've made some improvement this week, so hopefully we'll play a little bit better. Coach, what do you like about your team so far? Now, you don't like the fact that you're one and two, but obviously you're very competitive. You've got some pretty good skill out there. What part of the team has come together, maybe even just this week in practice? Well, you know, I like the way they, they bounce back. And mm -hmm. we have a small senior class. Quincy's one of 16. Uh, for and, a seven A school, that's really, that's that's a small number. Absolutely, it's, it's the smallest we've had since I've been there. And uh, but yeah, we've got ninety kids on our roster. So I like the fact that we've got a youth movement coming. Uh, you know, our classes under that are very large, and uh, we're getting a lot of participation out of those young guys. I've got a freshman fullback. Uh, <laughs> I've never had that before. I've never really played a lot of freshmen. Uh, so, Some people you know, don't even play a lot of fullback anymore either. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's, right. that's true. So you know, we're we're uh, we're we're trying to to grow, and our seniors are doing a good job of being patient. And we've still got opportunities out in front mm -hmm. of us that that we're playing for. So uh, you know, it's. Uh, it, it's been difficult in the fact that we've had leads in the fourth quarter and we've lost two. We haven't finished games. I think some of that maybe attributes to our youth, uh, but uh, you know we we've got to raise the bar this week, no doubt. Quincy, when you look at the uh, Theodore team I mean, running the football, they've done that uh, a lot for a long time uh, over there. No different this year. What do you see when you look at the at the Bobcats getting ready for the game this week? Uh, what I look at is that they're really trying to push the ball through the line. I, play defense line. I'm looking forward to it to <laughs> see if we get able to stop them going through the ball. Yeah, this is their game. Uh, they don't hide it. They don't try to masquerade what they do, right? I mean, when, when, when they, well, I say break the huddle, showing my age, <laughs> but in any event, when they line up and come at you, you have a decent idea of what they're about to do. Yes, yeah. Um, kind of just planning on that, trying to work on that we know exactly what they're planning on doing and we're hoping to stop it. As you see, they have a great running back and mm -hmm. they're going <laughs> to head first and run, try to run through the line. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, so they talk about mm -hmm. offensive linemen who love to, they love to run block. It's easier than, than pass block. As a, def as a defensive lineman, you know, uh, is, is, it, is it the same feeling or is it a little more fun maybe when you get to maybe go chase the quarterback once in a while? Uh, it's a little fun when you get to chase them. Like, <laughs> like, you just <laughs> run away. It's something you look forward to. Yeah, it looks like he's running for his yeah. life. Yeah. Running backs never look like they're running for yeah, their they lives. Look like they're they look like they're running something. at you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, big games, uh, you got them every week here. And you talk about your team is, is young, and but but tr you know you got to you got to get over the hump. But like Dan talked about, um, you know this is kind of you might have some uh, 
uh, old school tendencies in the way you do it. I'm like, there's if you kind of like some old school football, like <laughs> yeah. this this is going to be the game to be tuned into tonight. I think you're going to see a lot of that on both sides of both sides well, of the ball. I'm gonna tell you, I admire Eric and and the job he's done at Theodore, and and we're we we both like to play good defense, mm -hmm. uh, and that's when you do that, you want to run the football. And they like to run the football, but they're a diverse pa uh, uh, offensive attack. You know, it's it's. But they're going to run the football, and we like to try to run the football because I think you have to to be a good defensive football team. Can't throw it 90 times a game and play good defense. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, I think uh, we're going to have to be physical. We're going to have to match that because they are going to hit you. They're going to hit you in the mouth, and and you know they're going to do it for four quarters. And uh, you know, two years ago we went over there and we were able to squeak one out. And it was a it was a, a war, and they came back and returned serve to us last year. Uh, another hard fought football game that they won on the way to a region championship. So you know we've 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 kind of enjoyed playing each other because we like the style of ball that we both play. So you know hopefully we'll be able to match it because they've got a very good football team. You know this is like brothers fighting in the yard. I mean <laughs> not a lot of secrets. You know I mean I, I, certainly you game plan and you're going to try and deceive your opponent in some ways. But when you get when you boil it all down, coach. Coach, you kind of know what you're going to get in Theodore. Yeah, and, and when you play Alabama, you know what, he, what Nick Saban's going to do. It doesn't make it any better. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's fundamental and it's, and it's yeah. sound and it's, uh, you know, well coached and the kids, they play their guts out over there. I mean, it's really impressive to watch and I admire them. And, uh, you know, our kids, uh, you know, I like them. They, 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 give every, they give us everything they have. You know, they've come up short a couple times this year, but they've never lost any of their enthusiasm for playing. They've never lost any of their excitement for one another. Other. And I think that's key. Uh, we'll keep playing hard. Something good to happen down the road. And, uh, you know, it's just that we've got a tremendous matchup this week. Yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about this with Coach Collier as well, though, too. But you can also kind of see see that, that you know, McGill has been so dominant for so long. But then all of a sudden you get Fairhope uh, or Theodore wins the region championship last year. Those kids have learned how to win and win in the big games. You can you, you can see how other how that can work for a school like Fairhope as well. Absolutely, absolutely. We think we're on the verge of something good. We were close a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've had a few tough breaks this year. We've been hit by an injury bug, and we're a little bit young. But uh, we're 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 playing for today. We're not playing for tomorrow. Uh, yeah. We we want to try to you know we want to go in here to, at at over in Theodore and get a win. Yep. And if we can't, then we're going to regroup. And the next week we're going to do the same. Uh, and our guys they they believe that philosophy. It's worked well for us for the last four or five years. And uh, you know uh, I think it's going we're 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 in store for a good football game. That's why we're here. Yeah, to coach and to Quincy, we enjoy watching Fairhope football. Absolutely, thank you. Fundamentally yeah. sound. And uh, yeah, you are on the verge, and we know about that because uh, Jim and I do high school football on TV. Yeah, <laughs> and we've known, we've known what you've done other places too. Exactly. So, uh, coming back, we will get the Theodore matchup. Uh, we'll look at their matchup against Fair Hope as Coach Collier is with us, and we'll talk about the Bobcats, and they're off to a great start this season, and uh, see if they can keep it going right here on UTV 44 tonight as they take on these guys, the Fair Hope Pirates. Show is so much fun. Like it really, oh, yeah. it, it really, it really is. Get a yeah. chance to meet uh, young men like Reggie Malone here from the uh, Theater Bobcats. Head coach Eric Collier, and uh, off to a great start. Region champions last year. Off to a three and zero start this year. And like I was just talking about with Coach Carter there. What, what did that, what did that mean to to win the region championship last year? Because it had been dominated by by McGill for so long, and then you know you had to beat McGill to win the region championship. What just what has that done for the Bobcat program? Well, it, it did a lot for our community first. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a proud community and they, they love football down there and, and, and it's been a lot of good football played down there. So it did a lot for our community, it did a, did a lot for our kids. That was one of our goals going into the year. Uh, we was able to accomplish that. Um, and, and again, you know, McGill's got a great program. They do a great job over there, but that was a big win for our, our community. And, 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 and again, it wasn't just that one. We, we had a really good year, uh, but it's like I tell the kids every day, those kids have moved on other than a few sure. of them. I still got red, you think, mm -hmm. uh, But it also, <laughs> it kind of imparts that um, uh, a little more of the uh, expecting to win, and this is what the, the, the bar, yeah. the, the, they, those seniors last yeah. year helped raise the bar right. as to what's expected for yeah. the Bobcats now. Well, it's, it's big, <clears throat> it's big, you know, you get in those tight ball games and your kids have been there and done that, and, and it's something to be said about a team that knows how to win mm -hmm. and win late. Um, that, and again, that goes back to having some older kids, but also been in those battles. Um, and and I, I feel good about this bunch. We're not a, a, a really senior-laden team, 
But I, I, I like our kids' mindset. I, I like the way we approach practice, and we've had a great summer. Uh, and, you know, the thing is, is, they show up every day and work their butts off, and as long as they'll do that, we'll be fine. Erica, you are from that part of the county, and now you, you can sense the pride that that area has in the Theodore Bobcats. It's got to be pretty exciting for you and, and, and mean a lot, maybe a little bit extra, as you've seen this team and the program rise to a point where now people are really excited on Friday yeah. night. So what you're saying is I'm old? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying I'm old. <laughs> no, uh, honestly, I tell you, you know, it's, it's good to say it's like Reggie. I coached Reggie's daddy years ago. Wow. Uh, but again, I got, I got guys on our staff that's, that's been there for, played ball there, mm -hmm. exactly. come back in that community and want to give back. Yep. And, and it does mean a lot. It means a lot to me and it means a lot to our community. Uh, and, and you know, there's, there are certain people going to be at every ball game. It don't matter. They're going to represent the Bobcats. It don't matter. And it, I tell you, when you've got that in your community, you got that in your school, you'll always have a chance, yep. and, and that's the truth. Yep. And we've had, you know, we've had some great games at Theodore, some great times. Just sitting, there talking with, uh, you know, past coaches there. Yep. Uh, I mean, we've had, uh, we've had some great times. Well, there. and it's really kind of a historic, giant stadium too. Yep. I mean, it's, it's a big place, and and uh, to think that Reggie's dad played there. <laughs> no, he was he was at Alma Bryant. Alma Bryant. Okay. Wow. <laughs> How about that? Huh. Yeah. So uh, who was better uh, on the spot? <laughs> and Reggie, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. He, he well, agrees. You agree Reggie, with the coach on that one, right? Ball. Never going to disagree You're with both Reggie. Okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, as a, as a senior, and uh, Dan was just saying that uh, Coach Collier told him earlier in the week that you're really the glue of the defense. Just what was your mindset coming in this year as a senior, one of the leaders on this football team? Well, it was a big role to take. You know, we had a lot of people that left from last year, mm -hmm. but I handled the role well, and I'm still. How does it, does that start with? almost everything off the field, in the weight room. Uh, you know, what, what are some of the duties that you have as a leader that people don't see on Friday night? Well, I've been trying to be a, more of a vocal leader. Okay. And um, it started off in June, in June, July, August, September, and it's gonna keep going forward. That's, that, that's when the hard work really goes in, is in the... Yeah, so. uh, Reggie's <laughs> chewing some backside music. He's getting on <laughs> I people. Uh, I, could, I could see it. So um, we're just here, Coach Carter, talk about your uh, team defensively. Obviously, uh, you've always played great defense out at, uh, out at Theodore. You've kind of hung your hat on that for a lot of years. And then uh, also running the football. You like to run the football. You have a, a diverse attack, as Coach Carter just said. But um, uh, again, you're we probably know what, what you're going to get out of a Bobcat team on, yeah. a, on a Friday night if things yeah. are going if things are going well yeah. for your team, right? You're right. I mean, that's kind of our identity, and that's what we try to do. Um, you know, if you come in, you know, we're going to try to run the football, and, and, and our kids believe that, and our community believes that. You know, years ago when we first started, I, you know, my thinking was this, is it was always ran the ball well. Why am I going to be the smart guy and come there and change that? <laughs> yeah. So I might not be the smartest guy in the world, but I know this is, is we got, we've had a few running backs. Yeah, no kidding. And we've had good, good offensive linemen. Yeah. So let's we've uh, seen let's continue. Them. We yeah. have seen them through the years. And that offensive line. We still line see them on the uh, plan on Saturdays, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. How about that? Uh, you know, and uh, a lot of guys have been really successful in coaching by not solving problems they don't have, right? Yeah. Like, it's just, yeah, just it's don't try don't to make it real hard. <laughs> I tell our guys all the time, it's not real hard. Make, just make sure the best guy gets the ball a lot. So. Uh, that's coaching right there. That's yeah. coaching. Uh, tell us about this Fairhope team. That well, you know, see. you look at them, and, you know, I followed Coach Carter since, since he was at Auburn. He's done a phenomenal job up there, and he's done a phenomenal job over there. It's just, they're like carbon copies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're, all, they're always going to fit where they're supposed to be. They're always going to be physical. You're not, you're not going to flank them. Uh, and you look at them on offense, you, you're not going to go in and zero in on any one thing. He's going to spread the ball around and make you defend the whole field. And, and he's always been that way. That's not just this team. And, and I've told our, our coaches, I've told our kids that is they, they're a program and they're a proud program. You're talking about Theodore being a proud program. You go back and look at Fairhope football. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a program that, that's got a lot of pride and, and a lot of history. Uh, so. Again, just with him being there and also the community and, and the feeling they have over there, I, I know this, that they're, they're not going away. <laughs> uh, and, and they'll be good for years to come. But again, the thing I like about Coach Carter is when you watch his team, they're going to be gap sound. And that's big. I'm a defensive guy. And uh, that's, that's things I look for. And, and you don't outflank his team. Right. So I always respect that out of guys. Yeah, and it's so, it's so cool. Like uh, right before we came on the air and both coaches were arriving here and Big handshakes, big hugs. I mean, it's just the the yeah. the, the respect, friendship, and brotherhood that uh, we see among almost all these coaches is really something special. Yeah, and, and also speaking about the the history of Fair Hope High School football, it is rather illustrious when you when you oh, check it, it out. And at one point, Fair Hope was football on the Eastern yep. Shore. Yep. They, they, were, they were the yeah. power. Yep, that's it. All right.
Reggie, good to see you. Uh, uh, we'll tell your dad that uh, he's a close second. That's what, you, that's, that's what it is. All right, Coach, stay here. We'll come back. Close. Wrap, wrap it up as we get ready for the kickoff tonight. Friday Night Rivals as it is Fairhope traveling across the bay to take on Theodore. We'll have it here for you coming up. Kickoff in just about 10 minutes on UTV 44. should be here in the commercials when Dan Brennan is talking about fishing because that is really, really what makes the... I'm talking about a poor, poor management of mileage, <laughs> what I'm talking about. Oh, uh, All right, so our last segment here, uh, Coach uh, Coach Collier, Theodore Bobcats, we've got Coach Carter here with Fairhope. Our last segment, Bren in, Bren out. I pose a question to Dan Brennan. He decides if he's Bren in, Bren out, then you two have to decide uh, if you want to be there uh, or not. A Maryland theme park is challenging couples to spend 30 hours together in yeah. an unusual tight space. Yeah. The 30-hour coffin challenge. Mm -hmm. 30 hours in a coffin, Dan Brennan. You know, me and Kim don't do well 30 hours just in the house. <laughs> so I would think a coffin is a no-go. No matter what the prize uh, is. Uh, yeah, uh, and it's, it's my fault, yeah. by the way. No, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. <laughs> I'm in. My wife's standing over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she will. Well, Who uh, says she wants in? That's, oh, that is a veteran coach right there. No, he wants something. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right, uh, earlier this week, uh, I may or may not have gotten a gotten a parking ticket in downtown Mobile. Ooh. Parking tickets, Dan Brennan. Yeah. Uh, don't pay him and just put him in the shredder. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> or, no. Or you know, you're Bren, pay. if it's paying is in, Bren in. Oh, put him in the shredder, coach. Yeah, I tried that in college. That don't work. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody uh, tries it in college. Uh, don't work uh, well. This you know, uh, this one's dang thirty dollars. That's, uh, that's a bad one. Thirty dollars. We got to build that bridge. Oh, uh, uh, all right. So, uh, speaking of me, uh, last okay. week getting gas in my truck, you know, it said low fuel. Then it said one mile to empty. Stretching oh. it that long, Dan. Brent in, Brent no, out. No, I'm not gonna let Kramer. No, I'd say Brent out. Yeah, I'm in. I, yeah. yeah, that's me. You've done it. How far you can go? Yeah, yeah. Come yeah. On. yeah. See how far you can Play. go. It was a 24 gallon tank, yeah. and I put in 23.8 gallons. Yeah. So that's uh, how. Close it uh, yep. was there. Uh, all right, so uh, lastly, Brennan, uh, you got to be Brennan on this one. The Denver Broncos will be 0 and 2 Sunday night. But Brennan, when, yeah, Denver's going to be 0 and 2. In. Yeah, that man. Yeah, know. Bears are going to be. Yeah. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate we appreciate the sport on that the one. Bears. Uh, all right, our coaches here, Fairhope and Theodore, tonight here on UTV 44 Friday Night Rivals coming up next from Theodore.